Hey guys, good morning. Robert Blackman, uh, president of Fleece Cafe. Today I'm going to do a quick training on something that uh, is uh, is to the core of my success and Sherry's success. When people ask us, you know, Robert, you guys have been in the business so long, how have you survived everything? It, when I sit down and I talk with people and I tell them of our journey, or they read one of our books, they just shake their head and they go, why did you keep coming back? Why, why did you never quit in network marketing? And so it really kind of comes down to the four core beliefs that Sherry and I have always had. And to be upfront with you, we haven't always, always had all four of them at one time. I will tell you that if you can have at least two of these four core beliefs, uh, you can become successful in network marketing. But to become very successful, you need three. And to be very successful and sustain for your career, your entire life. I mean, you want a lifetime residual income, don't you? Well, in order to have a lifetime residual income the way Sherry and I have, you've got to have all four. And believe me, when we first started out, I had all four. And then I lost them. Okay, and we're going to talk about that today. So anyway, your four core beliefs. And by the way, if you're not a member of Felice Cafe, get back to whoever invited you here. Uh, get a sample of our AM coffee and tell us what you think. We're looking for feedback on our coffee. We love it. Go to our page and look at testimonials. You'll see everything. So, what is a core belief? A core belief is something that, let me put it in perspective of religion. Let's talk about religion because that's pretty easy to distinguish. If I'm a Catholic or I'm a Baptist, each one of us, although, and, and I'm going to speak in, in biblical or spiritual terms, not to offend anybody uh, in today's environment, but this is where I'm, I'm 57, so I kind of grew up with church and Sunday school. Still go to church today. Our kids went to Catholic schools. So for me, if somebody's a Baptist, they have a different core belief of the, the Bible than maybe a Catholic does. And as we all say, all roads end to the same place, but they're different paths. And so if you were going to take a Baptist congregation and say, look, your pastor has quit, and now you've been uh, absorbed by the, the local Catholic church, and now you have to start going to the Catholic church. Well, I guarantee you 90% of those members would never attend. And the 10% that did attend, half of them wouldn't come back the next week. Why not? Well, it's because their core beliefs are a little bit different. Although their alignment, where they're going, is the same place where they, they feel that they're going, which is heaven. Uh, and all roads lead to heaven is, is uh, through all churches, is what we say. But there's a core different belief. And within network marketing, there can be core different beliefs as well, too. But you have to have these four, an element of these four, in order to be successful. And this is... Um, I've been taught by a good friend of mine, Dale Calvert. This is where I learned these from uh, probably 25 years ago. And I will tell you, they have rang true through the last 25 years of our career and through our, through our uh, ownership of uh, Felice Cafe. So number one, you have to have a belief in the profession. What is the profession? It's network marketing. And we can get caught up today, and, and I'll give you a, a, a quick example of how somebody well, I'm going to go down to number two on that, but on profession, um, whenever everything was going on with the Herbalife case uh, and the guy was suing Herbalife, there were people that were dropping out of my business left and right. And I was calling them up one day and I said, well, you know, why, well, Robert, I just want to let you know we're quitting. We're going a different direction. Well, where are you going? Well, we're going to go to affiliate marketing. We're going to sell big ticket items. I'm going to get into real estate. I'm going to get my real estate license. I'm going to go sell cars. Uh, they were just all over the place. I said, well, why are you getting out? What happened at our company? Well, nothing's happened at our company, but I see where our profession is going with this Herbalife case, and I'm going to get out before it's too late. So there were people that did not have a, a core belief in the profession enough that they were right here that I could go, I could blow on them and they fall over. And you've got people that are in your pipeline right now, prospects that are just one a uh, commercial away or one conversation away from getting out because they've lost their their belief in the profession. You have people that have been in multiple times in network marketing and they say, I'll never join another network marketing program again because they've lost faith in their core belief in the profession. Well, the reason why I stayed with it 
I'd get knocked down, something would happen. Heck, a company would close. A downline member would steal my downline and go somewhere else. And I wake up the next morning, you know, like, where'd everybody go? Well, Rob, we all went over here, but we didn't invite you. Well, I had a belief in the profession because I grew up in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, which was uh, the headquarters of Phillips 66 Petroleum. And I also grew up with two parents that uh, helped service all of the community. Mom was a hairdresser. Uh, she worked seven days a week. She'd come home and put her feet up vertical on the couch uh, for an hour because she'd be on her feet for 12 hours and her ankles were swollen every night. Dad ran a printing plant with 300 employees seven days a week. So between corporate America, I saw all my friends at school, they, you know, every holiday their mom and dad would be off and every holiday my mom and dad would be at work. And so I, I longed as a kid, I go, man, I wish my parents worked for Phillips. I remember used to saying that. I used to say I hate it that my parents own their own business. Well, then about my sophomore, junior, senior year, that time period, a lot of my friends who I grew up with, where their parents had been at Phillips 66, would come to school or they'd miss school or they'd be crying. You could see they were crying at school. And I go, what's the matter? So my dad's been working for Phillips for 39 years. And he got met at the door today with a box by the security guard with all of his stuff in it and said, we need your keys and your badge. You're fired. And here's your, your, your package. Here's an envelope that tells you what your package was for retirement. So they were just whisk away in the morning, never, so can I go and talk to my friends? No. Can I go say goodbye? No. Can I go talk to my boss? No, you're fired. If you enter the building, uh, the building, we're going to arrest you. So they were treated like bandits after 39 years. And a lot of other things about corporate America that I didn't like. Corporate America is great. You got to have a job. There's got to be people running corporations. I'm not against corporations. I was against corporations for Robert Blackman. So when that happened at 18, I go, now I understand why mom and dad own their own business because they want to write their own paycheck. They don't want to walk in one day and someone tell them that they're fired. I get that. So I threw myself into traditional business. In a bankruptcy or two later, I looked up and I said, I'm going to die at 30. Uh, I've already got, I already had back problems because I was lifting, you know, paper everywhere on my shoulders and, and bending over printing presses and repairing presses uh, 10 hours a day. So I looked up as a young kid at 17 and 18. I started network marketing when I was 17. I had a great correlation of this profession of why I thought it was better than corporate America. And it was better than traditional business. So for me, I have never lost my core belief of this profession of being a better way. Never. Since I was 17 for the last 40 years, I'm soon to turn 58 on February 12th, so that'll be my 41st year. I love this profession. Hey, there's people in it, so errors are going to happen. People are going to lie. They lie everywhere. They lie on Wall Street. You know, the, 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 the thing that makes our country great, there's people being arrested every week on Wall Street, right? So to me, the emperor had no clothes when it came to business. I was okay with that. So I had a belief in our profession that it was a better way, better than a job, better than a traditional business, better than a corporate job, okay? So you have to have a belief in the profession. That's why I listed as number one. If you don't believe in this profession, if you're just gonna stick your toe in it and you're gonna see what happens, I'm gonna tell you, I'm going to be able to blow you over with the first deal. First obstacle. First obstacle, you're gone. So number one, you got to have a belief in the profession. If you don't have one yet, go find it. Hang out with people like me. You go online today, just put in network marketing trainers. There's tons of them out there. Eric Worre, Todd Falcone, um, uh, Ray Higdon, uh, Brian Carruthers. Uh, you look at other people. I mean, those are the four guys, uh, and I consider them my friends. I know all four of them. But I listen to them every day. I wake up every single day, Robert Blackman does, and I listen, I read Eric Worre, Todd Falcone. He's usually skiing, so he's not really a worker anymore. He's just more of a, he's a skier. Uh, uh, hi, Todd, how you doing? Uh, Ray Higdon and his wife, Jessica, are put out some awesome content. I've never been to one of their uh, uh, conventions that they hold or trainings, but you ought to go if you do, because they look great. Uh, and then Brian Carruthers. Brian, you know, is, is the top rep in his company. So all four of those people and me, I would say that if you had five people that you wanted to hang out with on a daily basis, the five of us can give you a belief in this profession 
that nobody, that'll be bulletproof, okay? So associate with people that you want to be like, that you want to become. That's what I've done all my life, and I and, and it's succeeded for me. So profession. Now company. You got to have a belief in a company. I've got a, I've got a couple of great stories for you. Uh, this is February 2020. I believe it was May uh, of 19 that Sherry and I pre-launched uh, Felice Cafe, which means that uh, everyone could come in for free, which, you know, Katie bar the door, here come everybody from, you know, Zimbabwe, all around the world, uh, to people right here in Norman, Oklahoma. That's the people pre-enroll in Norman, Oklahoma, who I didn't know until now. So we gave a target date of September 1st, and everyone was going and going and going and going. Here came September 1st. Sherry and I had to get on a call and say, we're not going to launch today. Maybe by the middle of the month or the end of the month. Well, we lost a few people. I got texts and emails, people calling me a scam artist because I didn't launch on a pre-launch on September 1st where I gave them a free website and a, uh, uh, even sent this person some samples uh, of what we were doing um, and called me a scam artist because we didn't launch on that date. So they had no belief in the company, which is basically Sherry and I, so they didn't have any belief in, I, in Sherry and I. So I was okay with that because I understood it. As we went out, we, we launched, so, so September October, November. So November 17th, we launched. So in that two and a half month period, we lost thousands of people who lost their belief in the company. We were no longer one of their core beliefs. People were believing in the profession that they were going to get rich if they got in early. But as soon as there was a hiccup, boom, they fell over and they're out. But yet I see those people now promoting other programs or starting their own programs. And that's great for them as an entrepreneur. But I'm just telling you that if they're going to drop out of our company for free before we even launched, what do you think they're going to do with the other companies? Probably the same thing. And that becomes a cycle. So you have to understand when people talk about network marketing, about what type of, you know, net and some negative tonality, I just laugh. I go, because they, obviously you've never been in a network marketing program before. Obviously you've never promoted it to your family and friends. Obviously you never got 10 customers only to find nine of them are gone the next month because of it's just people. And so what Sherry and I have done is we've taught our team. It's the old adage, uh, like in the movie Moneyball, where they come in and uh, Brad Pitt uh, goes out and gets all these guys, uh, you know, the misfits and uh, brings out the guy on first base who was always a catcher. And the other coaches were asking Brad Pitt, what do you think? You know, and, or, or he asked them, what do you think? He goes, well, I think he just lacks confidence. And so Brad Pitt says, give him some. Give him some confidence. And so the coaches were kind of looking at each other like, well, how do we do that? Well, if you know the four beliefs that your team has to have in order to stay in through thick and thin to pay you a residual income, a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, hey, when you're dead and gone and paid to your kids, how do you do that? It's these four core beliefs. So here's what I'm going to tell you today. I'm going to give you these four core beliefs. I'm going to give you a reason to believe in all four of them today. And that's what you have to do, not only to your prospects, we talk to our prospects in a series of emails and on conference calls and on the telephone. We give them we, we give them one or two of these four all the time because this, this is it, guys. This is, this is the backbone. This is what keeps people in. This is what's going to keep you in when everybody quits, when nobody believes in you, when your best friend keeps telling you, are you still in that deal? When are you going to get out? When are you going to go out and get a real job? When are you going to get out and like get a real estate license or start your own? Why don't you come with me and work in insurance or car sales? Come on, man. I, I made $5,000 last month. Is it residual? No, it's not. It's based on sales. Well, this is sales too with the residual. So how do you get belief in a company when they just launch? Well, you got to be a little bit of a maverick. You got to be a little bit of a risk taker, but also you got to be able to read people. And that's why Sherry and I, are who we who we are. We're just showing you who we are. We're not we're not portraying any uh, you know highfalutin status that we're a billionaire. You know, just throwing money away to everybody. We're here to build a business. 
We're here to build a business, not just with you, but for you, but also we have five kids. That's my motive. Heck, I got three weddings to pay for. I got three girls. So you want to know what my motivation is? Number one, I just love this profession. It's better than traditional business, which broke my back, and it's better than corporate America, which broke my heart. Okay, so network marketing is it. Dot, it, it. Dip the chip and end it. It's over. You can't even have that conversation. You can have the conversation, but you'll never win it with me because that's my core belief is this profession is better. And I sit with friends and I talk with friends. I text with friends all over the country and in this town that are unhappy with their jobs, that are unhappy with their businesses, but yet they won't look at network marketing because even though we may have exposed it to them, Hey, not everybody we know gets in either, okay? It's just, it's not, it's not plausible to think all your family and friends are going to join. You'll be lucky to get 5 or 10% of them as a customer. Get referrals from them and move on, okay? So the company, what do you think the belief level is of the diamonds over at Amway that have been in for 10 years? What do you think um, Bill Britt, who passed away, and Dexter Yeager, what do you think their families, how do you think they feel about Amway, the company? What do you think their conversations are around the 1st and the 15th when most people get their, their paychecks? What do you think their conversations are when they get a bill in the mail? They're going to go, <gasps> is, is it a cutoff notice? Is it, you know, uh, what's your counter? You know, can, can we make payments? Are they just, or, or do the bills go to an accountant, which is what I knew they did for them, and they have somebody else pay their bills because they have belief in the company. That's why those people don't, you know, how is Amway still number one at over eight billion? They got a bunch of people have a core belief that Amway is the best company in the world and they would never join another one that would possibly go out of business because Amway has paid our bills for 20 years. How are you going to compete with that? You can't. So you have to have something in the company that attracts you. I know a lot of people are attracted to the fact that Sherry and I are doing this as a couple. The fact that we have 62 years of experience. The fact that we've been consultants. The fact that we've been distributors. The fact that we've written books on Amazon. The fact that we've been consultants with a billionaire and a couple of multimillionaires. The fact that when people text us, we answer. When they call us, we answer. And we return the calls. And we're just normal, everyday people that have ambition. And once they get to know us, they, they want to go to work with us or they at least want to hang out and, you know, have a pizza or a steak with us or come over for a barbecue. OK, so by having belief in Sherry and I, they're believing in Felice Cafe. And as time has gone on now, now into our third month, those people that originally had quit in the pre-launch, what are they doing now? They're coming back. They've only been gone four or five months. But in that four or five months, they got so beat up out there, they realized, well, this product tastes great and the comp plan's great and it's $4.95 and boom, belief in the company, okay? So that's core belief number two. Number one is we've got to believe in the profession. Number two, you got to find a reason to believe in the company. Either it's brand new, it's 20 years old, it's 40 years old, or it's it just opened up in the Philippines or whatever you want to say about it. But you got to have a belief in the company, find it. And if you don't have it or your team doesn't have it, get them some, get them some belief in the company. Number three, one of my favorite, belief in the product. As Sherry and I have said several times, the reason why we picked coffee is because not, well, we've promoted coffee since the 1990s in different companies. We've never promoted coffee in our own program. So the reason why is because every morning we do this. Get out her planner, get out my planner, who's taking who to this, what are the kids doing today, what do we want for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, What's going on tonight? The, what calls we have? What are, what rank are we at? When's our auto ship due? You know, what other products can we do? We got some follow-ups. I mean, you just look at it every single day of our lives. Before we started Feliz Cafe, we started it with a cup of coffee. So we wanted to create a product that had something like this. When you took it, immediately you knew whether you liked it, yes or no. Isn't that, isn't that powerful? A weight loss shake. You can take it and you know immediately whether you like it or not, but usually it's going to take you a week or two to see some results, right? But if the taste is so bad or you have uh, negative results with it, you, you get off the shake, right? What I loved about coffee and our product is most people know immediately 
just by the smell, whether they would like to taste it or not. And as soon as they taste it, I like that or I don't like that. And within 30 minutes to a couple hours, boom, they either feel it or they don't. So we have a product that is universal. It's the second highest consumed product in the world with the exception of water. So whatever your product is, get it in the hands of people. We lead with our product. You have to become a customer first at Fleece Cafe. And we did that for a reason because we know it's easier to get a customer than a distributor. We could have come out of the, you know, bank, you know, guns blazing, four ninety five, nine ninety five. dollars Hey, you know, special founders club of $1,995. And here's what front loaded you with all this product. Even samples, we could have done that, but we didn't. We're starting at $4.95. People have laughed at us. People have texted me with smiley faces like, are you closed yet, Robert? I, I mean, I get all sorts of hate texts and emails and phone calls all the time and because people have too much time on their hands. I've got lots of haters, which means that we're doing lots of good things over here. But I have a core, a core belief about products, and here's what I know. And you have, to, you have to be able to phrase this for your own product, but here's, here, I'm going to give you my product pitch. Here's why I pick coffee. Number one, 400 million cups a day are drank. Number two, I don't have to teach you how to drink coffee. I don't have to teach you how to make coffee. Number three, I don't have to teach you to remind you to buy coffee. Matter of fact, if you wake up in the morning and your morning schedule and you're a coffee drinker, and if you get to your coffee maker and you go, <gasps> you're either out of cream, you're out of sugar, or you're out of coffee, what happens? Somebody darts down to the local grocery store and you get some. Or you get dressed and say, we're going to stop by Starbucks, a McDonald's, or some kind of coffee shop, a donut shop, and we're going to go get a cup of coffee on the way into work. Because I can't make it to work without a cup of coffee. That's how serious coffee drinkers are. And so we wanted to get into that river. We threw our canoe in there and our, got our life jackets on and we're paddling and we're in it. We're in the coffee, uh, coffee creek, all right? Boom, we're in it. And so we have a belief in our product. We have a belief in our product before we started the network marketing portion of our company, all right? We were promoting it. We were been drinking it all of our lives so we knew as a product that we could say this, if I give you a sample of our new coffee, will you try it? Yes or no? We knew eight to nine out of 10 people would say, sure, I drink coffee every day. What is it? What's in it? What does it do? Boom, 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 conversations. I can make money with this? Great. Or, oh, it tastes horrible. Oh, I would never take that ingredient. Oh my gosh, how could you promote this? No, I would, I would know I would never give you any names for that. Fork in the road, yes or no? Do you like it? If I give you a sample, yes or no? Do you know anybody else drinks coffee? Yes or no? Boom, boom, boom. We saw the vision from all of our years of experience of what this product could do for us. And yes, it's a product that you can buy less at the grocery store, but it doesn't have all of our ingredients in it. So we're able to have a higher price product than you would just buying regular old coffee. So you have to have a belief in your product or service. If you don't have a product itself, if you're service-based, digital products are the same way. So what we're experiencing right now is for every 10 of our cafe cards, which is a sample that goes out to prospects, right now, personally, seven out of 10 of those people are buying more, more, more coffee. The reason why is because we know the product. We believe in it. We talk about it every day. We drink it every day on camera, on film. We show it every day. So we have a core belief about our profession, about our company, and about our product line. Hey, right there, just those two. Matter of fact, you could start with just the profession, but eventually you got to have to start talking about the company. So you got to like the company. You got to get into the company. And eventually you just can't be selling the dream. It's got to have a product or service that they'll consume and do over and over and over again. And if you're buying those $500,000 kits, the only thing I warn you about, you better get the product on the street because in 30 days, another auto ship is showing up for $100 to $200 or $150 bucks and you've already got a couple months of supply of product on hand, right? I mean, you're not telling me that I don't even know. So you have to get that product moving, okay? That's the only advantage of those $500,000 kits for you as a distributor 
The advantage for your upline, of course, they get paid a bigger commission. And that's the reason they push those $500 and $1,000 kits because they can make money faster. Their sales volume can go up uh, faster than just a $59.95 auto ship like we have. So we knew going into this that a $4.95 little hurdle, you know, here's the hurdle, boom. Here's the $500 hurdle. Most people are gonna be right here on that $500 hurdle. So we put $4.95 here, why? Because we wanted everybody, everybody to try our product. Because we knew five bucks wasn't gonna be something. They had to have a conversation with themselves or anybody else, should I invest $4.95 in Felice Cafe's product and Robert and Sherry? Hmm, yeah, I will, yeah. It's worth five bucks to risk five bucks, okay? That's why we did that with the product. So understanding that, profession, company, product, and lastly, yourself. At the beginning of my network marketing career, I had um, a lot of confidence in myself because of my sports background, because I played basketball, baseball, football, and track, and went to college on a baseball scholarship. So I had, I, I was one of, I was an, ath, I was an athlete, still am an athlete. Um, or have an athletic mind, that's for sure, towards business and everything else. And so I had a belief in myself. And after about a year in this profession, I hit the ground when it came to my belief in myself that I had been told by everybody that I knew, liked, and trust about how bad the profession was. You know, my Aunt, Aunt Betty was in Amway and she lost, she, she lost everything, lost her shirt. Oh, the company we were with, you know, they filed bankruptcy or they allowed my upline, blah, blah, blah. There was something wrong with the companies. Oh, that product's overpriced. I can get that at Walmart cheaper, son. How in the world are you going to build a business on expensive blah, blah, blah? And then yourself. Robert Blackman, out of all the people I knew in my life, I never thought anybody like you'd fall for a scheme like network marketing or a scam like that. Go out and follow the footsteps of your parents and start your own business. So for me at age 17, I got involved in network marketing and I was in traditional business until I was 33. So about another 16 years, I was in both traditional business and network marketing. Now, the great thing about doing that, I owned a printing company. So I used the printing company to print all of our postcards, brochures, self-mailers, and run all of our ads, and we were doing fulfillment. So I had a belief in myself that was blown out of the way uh, in this in this industry by people. So for me, I kept leaning on the profession and giving stats of the profession. And I was leaning on the company. Hey, it's brand new, get in. This is, you know, ground floor opportunities are only one time to get in early. What do you think about all the people in Amway that got in 40 years ago? Don't you know they're happy now? So I was selling those things. I would be able to sell the heck out of the product and service. What happened to me is I moved into the shadows. I eliminated Robert Blackman out of the picture. Why? Because I'd lost belief in myself. And I will tell you, one of the most important things, beliefs that you have to have is a belief in yourself. And you do that by reading. You do that by, as I said earlier, who are the five people that you're associating with and the business model you wanna be like. I gave you the list of names, including yours truly, that you ought to hang out with on a daily basis. I know this video has gone 30 minutes. Maybe you can only listen to me in the car, all right, because I take so long. But the content is there. This is, this is content from 40 years of trial and error. So trust me on this. Work on your four core beliefs. The profession. Do you have a belief in our profession? Find one thing and go run with it. Tell those stats. Go to dsa.org and see all the stats you can about network marketing, that you can, talking points, that you can chat with your family and friends on a break, you know, in the morning of the, in the break room and, and take the coffee to the break room. Let it be a talking point. Just as you're sitting there stirring the, the sugar and the cream and they go, well, this tastes pretty good, Rob. What does it do? Read the front of the card, you know, right there with them. Let them see what you're doing. Read, the, well, what's in it? Well, in the back here, a bunch of ingredients I can't pronounce, but man, they should do work for me. So get the talking points of the profession. Get talking points on your company. Get talking points on your product or service. And get talking points about why they should go in business with you, about yourself. 
And if you have all four of these, and I can call these bullet points, if you have all four of these laid out in your presentation, and not all at once necessarily, but on your websites, yeah, but here's something that I will tell you to do as, a, as an insider trick. When you get, if you have someone that opts into your newsletter or somebody that's coming on to your fan page or something on social media, have a post or a video or an email that just talks about the profession that maybe gives, here's 17 reasons why you should join net, a network marketing, why you should be a network marketer. Send that out. Hey, here's seven reasons why you should join XYZ Company. Go to FeliceCafe.com and you'll see all the reasons why you should join us. Hey, here's 13 benefits of our product or service. Hey, here's three reasons why you should join with Robert and Sherry Blackman. Here's what we're going to do to help you. See how four of these tie in not only for yourself and your business uh, to build a belief, a core system to where you're rock solid. So when I blow on you, you actually push a little closer and say, is that all you got? Until eventually... You blow away the objections. You you are stronger than any resistance that you're ever going to come up against in this business when you go out and build it. But yourself, you can work on yourself every day. The product, the company, and the profession are already there for you. This is the wild card right here. You've got to work on yourself. You've got to feed your mind every time you feed your body. If you're sitting down to eat three times a day, I want you to ask yourself the question, have I read at least five minutes three times today? Have I watched Robert's video, at least one video a day, or part of a video every day, or Eric Worre, or any of the other people? Am I listening to other people that are doing what I want to be doing in the profession that I'm doing it in? Do I want to be free on the 15th, which means you get your commission check on the 15th from the company or your, your, your commission uh, wallet that comes in and bam, you knock all your bills out in one day. Boom. Do you want that? Then get involved in these four core beliefs in the network marketing profession. There is no other profession where the average person, average person that has no previous experience in business or sales can step into this business model and start exposing the product, the opportunity, the company, the profession, and exposing themselves, you know, as an olive branch. Here, let me help you with that. If I give you a sample, you try it. Great. Follow up. Hey, what do you think about our coffee? Do you know anybody else who drinks coffee? Hey, you know, can I invite you to this conference call? Can I invite you over here? If I, if I send you a video, will you watch it? If I send your sister a sample, do you think she'll try it? Well, give me her address. If you're out there as a facilitator, hey, I, when I was in the field, I saw myself as nothing more than customer service. I took orders on the back of cocktail napkins, okay? I took orders on my hand before while Sherry was driving and said, don't touch my hand until I get in. I got this guy's credit card for a thousand bucks on it. And I'd be, you know, she'd be, I'd be reading it off as she was, Sherry was typing it in. We got inside. If you're not taking orders on your hand or a cocktail napkin, you're not in the hunt. You're not in the game. You're floating along the river. You want to get in the fast track and the rapids, and you want to get after it. If you want your income to go up, you've got to go fast. If you want income to go up, you've got to go fast. And that's what we teach you here at Fleece Cafe is how to knock down your family and friends, how to knock down your cold market with social media by giving out samples and our cafe cards. Guys, this is the business. Wrap a bow around it. Give it away. Put it under the tree. This is it. This is the secret. When I die, okay, there's going to be somebody that's going to be talking about the four core beliefs. You know, one thing Robert has is four core beliefs, and somebody's going to put up a slide, or there's going to be a handout. Uh, there's going to be something on the back of the napkins next to the barbecue ribs, because it will be a cookout at my funeral. We're going to talk about these things. Why was Robert successful? Why was Sherry successful in network marketing? How do you stay in network marketing? How do you make six figures forever in network marketing? Belief in a profession, belief in the company, belief in the product or service, belief in yourself. And after you do that, you have to get that to duplicate. You got to give them some. Looks like the guy at first base, all he needs is some confidence. Well, coach is giving some. Robert, nobody in my downline is duplicating me. Well, give them one or four of your core beliefs and get them plugged in, get them going. Well, who should I be talking to? Well, when was your last conference call? Well, Tuesday. 
How many people were on it? Well, I don't know. We'll go back and look at the phone numbers and call them. How about all the people that are liking your posts? Have you inboxed them? Say, how can I help you? Get after it. Low-hanging fruit is everywhere around you. Take your four core beliefs and stop waiting for everything to be perfect. It wasn't perfect when we started Felice Cafe, but we had the four core beliefs, and we knew it was going to work, and it's already working after two and a half months. Anyway, write these down. Let these be a part of your life and part of your career network marketing. When you do, you're going to start seeing not only success for yourself and feeling better, but it's going to be duplicated in your team, and that's where real residual income happens, is when everybody is doing their four core beliefs, or at least they're aware of them, and they're starting to integrate them slowly or quickly into their lives. The quicker they do, the quicker your check will grow. Hope this has helped. Hope you guys have a great day.